Good morning, boys and girls. Today we're going to keep reading The Case of the Bear Scare. So we are on chapter three and it's called Crikey. The gym smelled like sweaty socks and t-shirts. I sat next to Mila on the hard wooden floor. More and more kids crowded into the room. We squished together in tight rows like too many crayons in a box. Our principal, Mr. Rogers, waved his arms like a traffic cop. Suddenly the lights flickered. Crikey! A voice bellowed through a microphone. Heads turned in every direction. A hand pointed. Excited shouts went out. There he is! In the back of the room! Look! It's Lightning Lou! I recognized him instantly. He was dressed in brown safari shorts, a tan short sleeve shirt, and a floppy brown jungle hat. And, oh yeah, he had a snake draped around his shoulders. Other than that, he fit right in. Lightning Lou shouted, Good day, mates! He strode to the front of the room ready for adventure. Lightning Lou was short and stocky. He smiled at the audience, white teeth twinkling. He wore a cast on his right arm. I guess String Bean was right. Lightning Lou really did get trampled by a wildebeest. Am I ever knackered, Lightning Lou screamed at us. I just flew in from Oz, boy. Are my arms tired? He laughed at his own joke. Knackered means tired, Mila whispered into my ear, and Oz is another word for Australia. How do you know, I asked. I just do, Mila answered. Lightning Lou spent the next half hour showing us slides of animals he'd met in his travels. All the while, he talked in that funny way of his. He shouted, crikey, every few minutes, or said things like, I'm as proud as a rat with a gold tooth. It was pretty confusing. After a while, Lightning Lou told us that he enjoyed our little chinwag. In a few ticks, I'll have to shove off, he said, but I'll answer a few questions before I leave. Ralphie Jordan stood up. What are you doing here, he asked. Aren't you supposed to be on television or something? Lightning Lou laughed. I came here to do some research on black bears, he answered. We'll probably film a show. Black bears, Bobby Solovsky scoffed. There are no bears around here. Lightning Lou smiled. Sure there are, mate, he replied, and I aim to find me one. Okay, chapter four. Bears. Kim Lewis raised her hand. My father once read a story in the newspaper about a bear who walked right into somebody's backyard. Lightning Lou nodded. That's right, it happens every spring. Why don't bears just stay in the woods, Kim asked. Bears are territorial, Lou explained. That means each male bear stakes out an area and calls it home. If there's a big male around, then a smaller male will leave to find his own place to live. Bears mostly rest during the day, he continued, but they can travel a long way at night. A young male will often follow a river until he finds a place he likes. He'll eat plants and small animals as he goes. We have a big river close by, Nicole Rodriguez murmured. Yes, you do, Lightning Lou said, and black bears are excellent swimmers. They'll even swim across a river if they like the smell of something. Lightning Lou glanced at his watch. Okay, mates, time for one more question. Then I have to untie the frog. Untie the frog, I asked Mila. It means he has to leave, Mila whispered. Australian slang, yeesh, I give up. Biggs Maloney raised his hand. Mr. Lou, sir, I mean, Mr. Lightning, er, um, Mr. whatever you call yourself, I have a question. How would you know if a bear was hanging around your backyard? Great question, Lightning Lou said. Most of the time, bears pass through without anybody ever knowing it. But sometimes they leave clues, like muddy tracks, or they'll nuzzle around in a compost heap. Bears like melon rinds, for example, and bears love birdseed and berries. They're very curious, too. A black bear might even go up to a house and look through the window. Our principal, Mr. Rogers, seemed a little uneasy. If one of our students ever saw a bear, he announced, he or she should stay inside and phone the police. Isn't that right, Lightning Lou? Lightning Lou frowned a bit, tilting his head back and forth. Yes, you should stay inside, he admitted, but to be honest with you, I worry more about the safety of the bear than the people. You see, Black bears don't want to hurt anyone. Yes, they can be dangerous, and a female will protect her cubs, but bears have terrific manners. They will leave you alone if you leave them alone. 
What would the police do? Ralphie Jordan asked. They can't take a bear away in handcuffs. Lightning Lou ran his hand through his thick blonde hair. Sadly, bears that wander into crowded areas are often destroyed. After all, bears are wild, large, and very powerful. The best thing to do if you see a bear is to stay away from it. Contact animal control experts. They'll put the bear to sleep with a small dart. Then they'll return the bear deep into the woods. This way, no one gets hurt, including the poor bear who is only looking for a home. And now, he announced, I must really be going. I'll be staying at the Holiday Hotel for a few days. Maybe I'll see you around town. And remember this. Lightning Lou threw his hat into the audience. He put his hands to his mouth and hollered, Crikey! A hundred voices answered with a great shout, Crikey! I didn't say a word. I just stared at the hat that had fallen into my lap. Okay, and that's the end of chapter four, and stay tuned tomorrow for chapter five.